we were talking Very about well. this uh, this matchup between Florida's defense and LSU's offense, and the storyline around here is that LSU's offense has not seen a defense like Florida, which they'll run into on Saturday night. You got a firsthand look at those guys on Saturday. What do you make of that group? I think they're really, really good. They they bring a lot of pressure, and they do it in a variety of ways. And I think that they'll have another piece to add to the puzzle against LSU Saturday night that they did not have against Auburn. Uh, Jabari Zuniga is probably going to play. They said he was cleared for Auburn. We expected him to play Saturday against Auburn. But, uh, and I think Dan addressed this yesterday, saying that he was cleared, but maybe not quite 100%. So rather than have him, you know, 80% for the next several weeks and kind of fighting through it, they held him against Auburn last week, and they got plenty of pressure with uh, Jonathan Grenard, the graduate transfer from Louisville. Uh, C.J. Henderson was back, and, you know, the secondary had three picks. So I agree with the assessment that LSU hasn't seen a defense like this. But I would also agree with the assessment that Florida hasn't yeah. seen an offense like LSU. So, you know, it kind of cuts both ways depending on which way you're looking at it. When you look at this offensive line, because you've seen both these groups in person, you saw LSU in week two versus Texas over there in Austin for that, that dramatic win for, for the Tigers. When, when you see LSU's offensive line and you saw Florida's defensive line last week, how do you like that matchup in the trenches? I, I think it'll be a fun one. I mean, each side's going to have some wins, right? That's what happens when good units go against each other. Rarely does one side completely dominate the other for the entire game. I think Florida has a variety of ways to get to the passer. But LSU hasn't shown a, a real tendency to give up a lot of pressure and Burrow gets rid of the ball, and all of that's going to be uh, you know, part of the chess match, I guess, between Joe Brady and Todd Grantham. You know, So we'll... We'll see. I think it's a good matchup. I think it'll be an entertaining one, and you know it'll be probably ultimately the one that will determine the game. That along with you know what Florida can do on offense, because I was really impressed with what they did on offense. Because I'll be honest with you guys, I thought Auburn was going to win the game mm -hmm. going yeah. into it. Because I, and the reason for it was I just didn't think they could block Auburn's defensive front. I've got great respect for Dan Mullen. I think he is one of the most underrated coaches in the country. He is big time. And I knew he would try to offset that because he knew that too. What I didn't account for is how effectively he would do so. Now, they turned the ball over so many times they probably should have lost the game. But they got the ball out of trash hands quickly. They sometimes, you know, would throw it to, to pit quickly and just try to let him make a play. And they set them up for taking shots later, and then they finally popped one running play because they really didn't get anything done uh, of note in the running game until P. Ryan busted that 88-yarder at the end. So I thought that it was a brilliant coaching job by Mullen, but uh, you know I sort of remain in the place where he has to out-scheme people up front because I don't know that they have the offensive front that just is going to provide all of this time for Trask and open up uh, gaping holes in the running game. We're talking to the man himself, Reese Davis from College Game Day. And uh, Reese, so so that kind of in line with that, right? Uh, Mullen, absolutely, manufacturing success right now. An offensive genius. Well, LSU has a defensive coordinator that makes over $2 million a year. A guy in Dave Aranda <laughs> who he, he carries yeah. that genius label as well. And here locally, that is a matchup that fans, media, we have really glommed on to. And quite frankly, a matchup that Mullen has won recently. Do y'all do y'all kind of view that nationally? Do y'all break down that matchup in the same way, kind of Mullen versus Aranda? Hey, you know, I, I guess we will. Uh, we haven't really talked about it in those terms yet, you know, kind of in the early planning stages. Uh, we'll have a big conference call today, and then, you know, the producer and I spent quite a bit of time going through some stuff yesterday. But that wasn't just locked on Ford and LSU. It was just the show as a whole. But I think that, you know, that is an interesting matchup. Dan wins a lot of those. He doesn't win all of them. And, you know, and Dave wins a lot of them. But, he, look, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't win every time. It's, it it kind of comes down to, you know, you've got to, the coaches. I think sometimes we talk so much about the coaches that we uh, undersell the ability of a guy just to make a play. But what is it the – I don't remember which coach said it first. There are a bunch of them. I know Chris Peterson – has locked onto this phrase, you know, we can't coach you if you don't do what we tell you to do. 
but we also can't coach you if you only do what we tell you. <laughs> I like you know, that. So, I've never know, heard some, that. You know, so <laughs> sometimes good. it has to be guys that, that make plays. You give them opportunities to make plays, and whoever's able to do that will will probably have the advantage. And then you, I'm, you guys may know more than I at this point, but what about the health of, of LSU? Are all of the guys coming back, most of the guys coming back, Logan Lawrence, uh, Caleb Bond, all of those guys, I how think- are they – how are they for the game? They'll be without Glenn Logan. Yeah. I think you could probably say that assuredly. And, and Terrace Marshall, who got back to practice yesterday, would be out too. I think everybody else, Divinity, Rashard Lawrence, mm-hmm. they, Sadiq Charles, they should be good to go. Okay. Well, I mean, you want to see everybody at full speed. Yes. And I think that this game, you know, this, this game, you'll, you'll need to be. I, much like maybe I'm underselling and undervaluing Florida again. Uh, I think the back to back physical games could potentially take its toll but you know look I thought Auburn was going to win the game last week I think LSU is going to win the game this week but you know Florida Florida keeps proving everybody wrong and and they um, you know they'll they'll come in and give them a fight I'm sure on Saturday night and I think Florida right now the longest win streak in the SEC. They see they think won like eleven games in a row. How and about that? Right, right? Okay, I know. Right, Dan Mullen already. Right, uh, right in line with that. This is why college football is so great. We're going to witness Saturday night the stakes, college game day, millions of people watching, prime time television. Both brands undefeated. Both brands on the line. Who do you think this game means more to out of LSU and Florida? That's always a tough question. I would say that it probably, I would say it probably means more to LSU because it's a home game. Difficult to lose a home game still with Auburn and a road trip to Alabama ahead. Yeah, you would like you'd like to go in to that to that area of the schedule, sort of not in a do or die situation. I know, in theory, I guess maybe the the common wisdom would be that you already are in that situation as it pertains to Alabama. You know, I don't know that anybody's going to anticipate being able to go to Tuscaloosa and lose that game and still play in the SEC championship game. But still, you know, if you don't want to, you don't want to drop one at home when you still have some big games within the division coming up, Florida can easily survive a loss from them. Not easily because it's going to be tough to beat Georgia no matter what, but I think you get my point. If yeah. Florida loses, Definitely. they still just have the neutral site game uh, they are better than the other teams in the East, although I think they need to be really careful next week after such back-to-back emotional games dealing with South Carolina. They're better than South Carolina, but I don't think Florida is so head and shoulders above everyone talent-wise that they can roll their B-minus game out and beat people. You know, so But in theory, they could survive the LSU loss, still take care of business on their own against Georgia, and still be fine in the SEC East. Reese Davis of ESPN's College Game Day. He'll be here Saturday as College Game Day will originate from the quad on campus. You can find Reese on Twitter at ESPN underscore Reese Davis. You understand the culture of this program as good as anybody nationally. But, Reese, let me give you a couple of numbers where the Tigers are right now offensively. They scored more points through the first five (laughs) games of the season than any other SEC team during the Southeastern Conference era. They've scored 40 or more points in the first five games. They lead the nation in scoring LSU's quarterback leads the SEC in total offense. I mean, still people are walking around here asking to get pinched. What, what do you think about this Tiger offense? Uh, I, it's not that that that's not a real thing. What you just said that can't be. This it's is crazy, LSU, right? It's What's crazy. What's going man. on? No, no it's. Uh, I think it's. I think it's awesome. And you know, it's one of the things that I've really emphasized to our guys when we've been talking. We all love Coach O because he is a character, right? And I say that affectionately. I think we need people. Uh, he, first, he has character, but he also has a great personality. We yeah. need that in college football because so many guys are afraid to say or do anything, and they try to form this corporate-type image you yeah. know, and all of that stuff. So first of all, he's good because of his personality. But what I've been emphasizing to guys is that you guys need to realize about, oh, he, he's into the metrics. He's into yes, the science yes. of this. He believes, you know, he wanted to change the offense, which sort of goes against, you know, the old defensive line coach mentality that we're just going to, you know, bludgeon everybody and be tougher and win of all. He wanted to change. You hear coaches say, I want to change all the time, but so few of them do. Ed actually did it. And, you know, I think he deserves just a ton 
of credit yep. for that aspect of it. He wanted to. He said it, but so many coaches, generally speaking here, are so stubborn, and that helps them at times, but it also comes at their detriment that they don't recognize something that actually needs to have a substantive change. Yep. Ed They're- recognized that, and he did it, and he, he's, he's so secure. He's player-oriented. I Look, I, I just think as much credit as Joe Brady is getting, and rightfully so, and Steve Insminger is getting for for checking his ego and allowing these chance, uh, changes to be made, the guy in charge deserves most of it because mm. he's the one that's making it happen. That's that's well said. That's well said. And the something that's lost on a lot of national guys yeah, too, Reese. That's that, impressive because he he leans into the analytics. He has a guy yeah. that decides. Like, okay, mathematically, this is when you go for it on fourth down. Mathematically, this is when you use a timeout. Like, he's very forward-thinking, and a lot of people pigeonhole yeah. him you as just what? a Cajun accent. Well, you know, I can't I, – I don't know if – I might have told you guys this when we talked before, but, uh, I, you know, when I went down there this summer and we chatted about that a little bit and some of the guys around the program, it, you know, told me how interested he is in that and he always wants a, wants a reason. Well, I was talking to him about it before the Texas game. And the subject of the fourth down thing came up, and, you know. And look, this—I'm sure all of your fans listening, you know this—but his analytics and metrics that goes into uh, recovery and science for the players and all of these things, yep. you know, to evaluate to get the best performance is not just deciding when to go on fourth down. But the the question of that came up, and the story of the LSU and five for five on the analytics. He he said something uh, that cracked me up. He said, you know, he said sometimes they. Even so, he said, I believe in it. He said, but sometimes they come up and tell me that the book says I need to go for it on fourth down. He said, you can imagine what I tell them to do with that book. <laughs> 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 so, you know, there's still, there's still some of that gut instinct that he's employing to great effect. And I, I, I just really, I've been, first of all, because I'm fond of him, I'm happy for him. But I've also been really impressed with, uh, with what he's been able to do there, what he is doing. South Louisiana is looking forward to having you and the crew back down in uh, in Baton Rouge. I reckon we'll see you in uh, in Rafino's on Friday hey. night. <laughs> not no 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 not Friday night. Friday night school night to get prepped. Now now Thursday night. Ah, uh, okay, the boys get out. <laughs> Reese, right. good to talk to you, man. All right, see you guys.